Anyways, <laughs> just see it here. Okay, we got people joining here on Instagram. Let's see if we got people. I'm just going to give me a few seconds. Oh, hey. Hey, Chef. Welcome to Instagram Live to our tonight show. We'll be starting here any second. We got a wicked guest on here <laughs> tonight. We're going to ask her all the secrets on how you, how you keep without going crazy, without, I don't know how you do it. I don't know. I don't know how you write. I'm not a writer. I'm blown away by people like you. <laughs> I think it's amazing. Okay. We have people coming on Instagram here and we're going to use Elizabeth. Are you a little nervous about the whole chat GPT thing going on today? I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. I mean, I, I feel like chat GPT might be, be out for my job, but, um, no way. No way. You, <laughs> Dominic, you gotta, you gotta be able to tell her no way. Cause yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a long good. ways away, but yeah, but, but em, embrace it and find a way to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> be, be really sneaky about it. And, uh, <laughs> build, build build its confidence with you and then stab it in the heart. <laughs> All right, so just give me a second here. Oh, this will be good. All right. Do you ever venture, Elizabeth, outside of Calgary and do like writings in Lethbridge or Red Deer? Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, usually when I venture out, I venture like farther out because I do some sort of like, like farther, like what, like like. like the well, <laughs> I mean, like outside of the province or country. Oh, okay, okay. But, um, yeah, sometimes, like I went down and ate a bunch of food in Lethbridge a couple years ago. Um. And uh, I, I actually might go up to Edmonton next week to really, yeah, yeah. My kid has the week off school, so we were thinking of of going out. It depends how much. It might just be my husband and kid, but <laughs> haven't been cool. up. I might might just enjoy some uh, time in the empty house. But um, it's been forever since I've eaten in Edmonton either. I, and there's so many good things up there that I need to get up yeah. and, and check them out. But um, yeah, no, mostly mostly Calgary, but like I'm, I, I go into Banff a lot to eat, uh, Cochrane sometimes, places like that are all sort Cochrane, of. Cochrane's got places. Oh yeah, Cochrane has a great um, Nepalese place. Oh wow. Called Ama A A M A, and it's way on the west edge of town. It's like almost out of Cochrane, but I, I actually went to high school in Cochrane, and there was nowhere to eat back then, but. Um, yeah, they've got they've got some spots now, like some non um chain places. They have a really, really, really good sushi restaurant. Really? Yeah. Are you kidding me? No, it's it's like a really exclusive omakaze sushi restaurant. Oh my god. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're blowing my mind already. <laughs> hey, re restaurant tours are looking for affordable real estate too. <laughs> oh my god. They I also love this. Bedroom communities. Awesome. Well, we're going to bring our guest as you hear Elizabeth talking already. Everyone that's going to be on TikTok as on Instagram. Um, hello, everyone on Instagram. I think everyone's still joining on Instagram. Um, we're going to get started here. So, Dominic, turn down your volume. I keep hearing the TikTok one. We just turned that off. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> they weren't kidding. They weren't kidding on TikTok. Here we go. Awesome. So, Elizabeth, we're going to start here in a second. Awesome. Welcome, everyone, to the late night show hey dominic i won't get it wrong because it's on the screen the late <laughs> night show with canada's restaurant guy and dominic 
we have <laughs> that's how you do it i think we should be doing it that way more often yeah. just put it up on the screen anyways we have a great guest in tonight elizabeth how do you say your last name Char- Chorney booth Chorney booth that's a freaking yeah. cool name that's a really cool name thanks it's well you know my my unmarried name was elizabeth Chorney, and then i married okay. a guy named booth but as a writer elizabeth booth is yeah. Too many. There's too many of us. So I had. Oh, is to, there? Is there oh, a lot of really? Yeah, there's a lot of Elizabeth Booths out there mm. who have very mm. similar email addresses to me. I get a lot of their email. So, um, so yeah, I went with the the big long hyphenated name, which can be a pain, but it's I'm the only one. So <laughs> that's really really yeah. cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're gonna have some fun with you a little bit. We're gonna bring in little AI here in a few minutes just to ask some questions on what we should be asking you tonight in relation, but share a little bit about who you are, what you do. You have the, I think you have the coolest job up there. Not as cool as mine, but you're up there. Yeah, Um, I have a pretty good time. Um, But tell us a little bit about you, where you are. I also want to know what you had at your last meal out before we get started. Oh, sure. Yeah. So I, um, my name is Elizabeth Chorney Booth and I, um, I'm a food writer based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been a food writer for about, oh, about 10 years. I'm going to say I'm, I'm a writer by trade. So I started off as a music writer and did that for about 10 years. And then I got, you know, sort of bored of it a little bit too old. I had a kid, so I couldn't hang out in rock clubs until three in the morning. I'm talking to rock stars all night anymore. So I kind of made the switch over to food and it's, it's been great. I mean, it's building a a food writing career as a freelancer is, is a bit of a slog, but um, I have some really great regular places I write for. I'm in the Calgary Herald once a week writing about restaurants. Um, I'm a regular at Avenue magazine here in Calgary and I'm on the CBC once a month. And then I also write for places like, you know, the Globe and Mail and the Toronto Star. And um, I always say whoever else will pay me. So it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a piecemeal career. So it's um it's fun. I get to write about restaurants and food producers and um, I do recipe development sometimes too. I have a couple of cookbooks. So so it's a it's a nice kind of fun way to piece together a career. And you want to know what I ate out last? Yes, I, yes. Thank you. Because I, I ate dinner out last night and I ate lunch out today. Okay, yeah, give me both. Okay. Yeah, so last night I went to um, the Little Chief restaurant at the Gray Eagle Casino in on the, yes. in the nation. Yeah. That restaurant is so good. It's We did like a chef's tasting and they have this re- real hotshot chef who just does the most amazing thing with, you know, whole animal butchery. He uses everything. The presentation is beautiful. It was all delicious. So, yeah. So all indigenous inspired stuff. Oh, we just talked about this. Didn't we, Dominic? We just talked about this. Uh, ChatGBT told us, I forget who we had on the show, but we asked ChatGBT about, um, I forget what it was, Dominic. I, for, I actually forget who. Well, we were talking about d- diversifying the offerings for for our guests, yeah. right? And and there was lots of there's lots of other uh, foods from around the world, and how um, yeah. we were talking about how um, imported cuisines have changed the landscape in Canada, and the the the, the indigenous people, the first people, were the least represented. Mm-hmm. And and the and the last to come to the scene, right? But they're coming there now, and the places like that are doing an awesome job. And That's the one I was telling you about in Edmonton, Jay, that the on the West End in the hotel, they they had a restaurant in there that was uh, it, it's indigenous owned because the hotel Sorry. is but the the food was all sort of indigenous inspired. You know, they had some mainstay stuff too, but yeah, that's cool. Um, they're doing a good job. I think that they've really upped their food game at, at the at the casino. That's yeah, yeah, they have. Job. They they have for sure. It was it was really cool. And then today for lunch, I did the complete opposite, and I went to a restaurant called Buongiorno, which is a Calgary staple that had to, had to move. Their building got torn down, so they reopened a few blocks down the street. 
I mean, it's technically a new restaurant. It looks like it's been there since the 70s. So it's, you know, red checkered tablecloths, just like very, Sweet. very classic Italian. So, so in the front of what we have to offer here in Calgary. Okay, cool. So Elizabeth, I got to tell you something before we get started. Here's like so many questions now coming through my head. Have you read this book? No, I really want to, though. I really, really want to. I know of it. I know. Like, uh, I have to tell you, I, um, I've been reading it and it is insanely good. And, uh, there's, there's not a lot of Albertan. I think, I think, um, um, I think Gabby is from Winnipeg for some reason. There's a lot of Winnipeg, but, um, you know, she's, she's not, but this book is incredible. You have to, you would love it. And everything about the stories, the history, there's some good stuff in here about Calgary, but you probably know more, um, by far, but if you do get a chance, you got to get that book. It's incredible. Yeah. I've been eyeing it. I think I'm a little sad that, um, she, she be writing it. Oh, you be you too. <laughs> Cause I would, I yeah, it's just such a good idea. And, you know, I've traveled across the country lots and that's what I love. It's like, what are those places? Like your old spots, like those. Do it. Do it. There's still, there's room to do it. There's room. We, we talked about it. Too. If you had to, but do it. There's, there's Good. lots of there's lots of like you say there's lots of un, untold stories right it's true yeah there's it's 78 thousand restaurants in canada but it's so those, those <laughs> old spots so those are like those are the spots that build cultural identity in in cities like i i love that i love looking for those spots whenever i travel i want to go to the new you know fancy trendy places but i want to go to the old spots too cuz it's i don't know there's there's magic are you yeah. are you worried, Elizabeth, that we will lose all those classic old spots that have that nostalgia a little bit over the next ten years? Yeah, I am. A, I'm. I am a little bit. I mean, there it's happened here in Calgary. Like we we lost we've lost a lot of places lately. You know, people retire and their kids yeah. don't want to take them over. Um, buildings get torn down and places. Yeah. You know, like like Bonjourno, they've they've resurrected themselves in a different. Um, building with different owners though but it's still got that same that same thing but sometimes places just they don't bother they they yeah. can't they can't get it together um you know i see a lot of chains moving in everywhere too not necessarily like the big chains but smaller chains too so yeah. i think we'll definitely it's inevitable that we lose some of them because it's yeah. you know it's mostly retirement people yeah people don't do it anymore they you they could. Their kids don't want to work as hard as the parents did, right? Because it, it's it's it for, for them to get to where they were was a, I'm sure that what you know when I don't, what was it Marv's Diner there down in Longview? Where was Marv's the the oh he and sing, Black he would sing Black Diamond? He would sing when he came to your table. Um, Serious country songs and stuff. Yeah, it was cool, right? Oh, I saw he, it was on Global did a thing on him when he was closing. He, he, he retired, right? He shut down. Yeah, so. But yeah, I think that it, it's hard because the, that generation of restaurants that were established 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, um, it was, they were different times for sure. Pe people had to work really hard for, for less money even, but they, they, oh, sorry. <laughs> Dominic, it's not a podcast. You're loud dog barking. <laughs> <laughs> now unmute yourself <laughs> anyways well dominic is dealing with his dog that's the best part it's not a podcast we can do this yeah exactly um, the rules. but and the other thing is too i mean it's not only do the the owners age out the customers do too i yeah, yeah. you know not there's always going to be younger weirdos who like that nostalgia for an era that they didn't actually live through but i don't know if there's enough to keep some of those places yeah Going well, I even, think, I even think like uh, there was kind of, it's almost like a time limit to rest, most restaurants, right? Like an expiry date that they have, unless they really reinvent themselves or have big money to do whole remodels and stuff like girls did. Yeah. Or, you know, unless you have like those really historic places like, you know, Cat's Deli in New York or something, that place is always going to be busy because just because yeah. it's historic. Um, but we, I mean, most Canadian cities don't necessarily have 
have ones that are that famous or that people go to often enough to keep them right. afloat. Well, we, 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 yeah, Peters, come on. <laughs> but do, do you, Elizabeth, do you take your kid to the places you, you, you said, where did you, where did you grow up? Sorry, you said you grew up somewhere. Oh, here in Calgary. Yeah. Yeah, do you take your kids to the to those nostalgic places. Um, Have yeah, so, sometimes, but no, not that much. I mean, a lot of the places I would have eaten at as a kid are are long gone. Oh, okay. Suburban family restaurants. I have to say, like my husband turned fifty last year, and we went. To, we, I took him to Caesars, and yeah. it was the first time I'd eaten at the original Caesars. Really? Okay, so, serious. So even I don't go to those places as much as I should. I, but I get, I'm, I'm picking up on what you said earlier that, that sometimes the the people don't free the the place closes down because the people are retiring, but also be, because people aren't frequenting it. Frequenting, mm-hmm. and I I think they're not frequenting them because they don't know about them, and that's kind of our fault because you, you say Peters Jay, but I I've met people that have never been to Peters because. What? Yeah, for sure. It happens, right? That it's it's in a prominent place, blah blah blah. You know, they've got they they're there and they've been there for a long time. But there's restaurants that um, I, I think it, it's hard because there's there's less money to spend on on eating out. Okay. So it's going to be even a bigger challenge for for those places. I'm afraid too that a lot of them are going to close down. Their rents are going to go up, or they're like they don't own their property. That's going to be a massive challenge. Yeah, and I mean, the Cal, like a city like Calgary, there were five hundred thousand people here when when the Olympics happened, right? And so places that are nostalgic for those of us who were here in nineteen eighty eight, most Calgarians weren't here yeah. back then, so they don't have that same sense of nostalgia. And if it's a place that's you know sort of trading on its longevity rather than the quality of its food, those new Calgarians are not going to go there because, no. mm-hmm. you know, they don't have that value add of the memories. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. So we're going to go over to chat here, Elizabeth, because I could talk to you all night. First of all, thank you again. This is awesome. Know, Tom, we're getting good guests, buddy. We're getting good guests, Tom. Right. Yeah. This is job, awesome. yeah thank you. <laughs> All right, Elizabeth, we're going to bring this up here on the screen because this is not a podcast, by the way, everyone. Everyone, TikTok, this is not a podcast. Instagram, not a podcast. May look like a podcast, may sound like a podcast. But All right, here we go. What do we call it? A live, live, exciting event? I mean, we screwed this up yesterday, too. I don't know. What, what do we call it? Well, not a podcast. We know that. But what is it? It's an event. It's a live event. Yeah. It's a live event. There we go. That will be restreamed. So when it, when it says live tomorrow, it wasn't really live, right? No, exactly. All right, here we go. So we're going to ask Chat GPT tonight because it is smarter than we are. We've been told it's kind of been a little dumb lately, so it might be interesting. So we'll take it for what it is. But what three topics are we going to ask Elizabeth tonight, and uh, with us about the restaurant industry in Calgary? Are you, are you nervous? Elizabeth, are you ready? It's, if it knows you, this is it's awesome. It knew her, it knew our guest yesterday. 100%. I, I don't cool think it knows room, right? I, it does you know think you. it knows you. What if it does? it does? It knows you. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Ready? Thinking. Ooh. All right, number one, the impact of recent trends and challenges. Holy shit, that's quite the question. That's a oh, heavy one. Oh, geez. Do you want me to answer that now? <laughs> oh, pick one. You get, you get to pick, pick one. one. Oh, I get to pick one. Yes. Okay, so we're going to get a rich discussion out of it, too, it said. <laughs> did, did it say that? Bottom, look, look what it well, said. We can always ask bottom, for new ones. If you want new ones. A rich discussion. Yes. We can go for new ones. Do you want some new? Do you want a couple more? Okay, so what's the second one? Supporting local and emerging talents? Talents, yeah. Oh, okay. That's interesting. 
I would like to know that. To me, I'm number two, but you're open to picking which yeah, one. Yeah, you know, I think I like number two. All right, let's go with number two. All right. So, first of all, what are – Dom, can you remember that? No, paste it into it. Send, send it to me in a text, and I'll – Okay, I'll, I'm going to put it on – I'm going to put it for everyone for okay. tonight's <laughs> – All right. Uh I have my reading glasses on. I can't read that screen. There we go. I'm put it up on tonight's. There we go on Instagram. Boom. Okay. So local roast rest restaurants. Oh, geez, <laughs> too much too much coffee today. Um, so we're going to discuss the role of local restaurants promoting and supporting local producers, emergency emerging culinary talents. Um, so what are some of the talents that you're seeing, Elizabeth, in Calgary right now? When it um, comes to like for for chef talent? Oh yeah. Oh okay. give, give us the sauce. Oh geez. Well, you know what? There's a lot like <laughs> I've I've kind of noticed like th- through sort of this the bridge of the pandemic, there's been a bit of a changing of the guard, like sort of those, you know, celeb chefs from the mid 2000s are you know, either n- kind of just like easing into regular restaurant life they're not as as flashy or or in the media as much as as they have been a lot of them have moved away or closed the restaurants things like that and there are there is sort of a younger cohort i think coming through um which is interesting to me because a lot of them are doing pop-ups and things like that and it's it's kind of hard to keep track of some of these guys but yeah there's definitely um some a lot of talent in the city it's funny because like conversations i've had with people are often about like is the era you know the rock star chef over do we still talk about chefs the way we we used to like do we need to know the name of the chef in the restaurant and i think in a lot of cases yeah like there's still a lot of really chef driven restaurants like i think about um a new place in calgary that opened just before christmas called salt and brick um when, <laughs> cool i've heard of that one yeah yeah and it's like it's actually a um second location of a restaurant that's in Kelowna the one in Kelowna though is like a 35 seater the one in Calgary's like 150 or something okay. so different scope different scale the one in Kelowna changes its menu daily the what? one yeah. <laughs> the one in Calgary changes its menu weekly what yeah so it's and it's a big restaurant and it's so they really have to kind of rely on their chef power so their chefs are there's um one name two guys the the head chef is a guy named dave bohati who um calgarians might remember him he worked at a a restaurant called market that uh is now a food truck and then he's he's worked in a bunch of other places he was the chef at teatro for a while so this is him kind of like shining like this is my talent i'm making up stuff every week go for wow. it and it's a big enough job that they they have another chef like their chef de cuisine is also kind of a rising superstar he's a guy named alejandro Vazzolino. No um, way. and he was at a place called he was at vendome which is also a teatro property um fairly recently and he also runs a pop-up called mato m-a-t-o so he's another like young go-getter so these are like two big chef personalities just going for it in a completely open kitchen i went and had dinner there shortly after they opened and sat at the kitchen bar by myself i went solo and i felt like i was in an episode of the bear like it was just like no way serious i mean a good one one where like every, nobody's fighting <laughs> nobody's fighting where no, I'm gonna say the bear is a little yeah okay but it, it was like just like every So, I mean, that is, it's like full on dinner and a show, but these guys really are laying it all out. Like it's new dishes and they'll, they'll come up with stuff too. Like, they'll just be like, oh, we have some beats lying around here. I made you this, like it's so, so that kind of stuff, I mean, I think is sort of, you know, reinstating the chef is sort of front and center. That leads me to the question then is you know how like so i forget where i read this that there was a trend of 
who said this to me? It might've been on one of my shows, but the beauty of inconsistency with the dish was the consistency for that restaurant. Ooh, so as we good. look at, yeah, you're like, oh no. So, yeah. Liz, so Elizabeth, if you look at, so we think about this. So we would go to a restaurant because we always go there for the same thing that we love. And what it was is that every time they would go, that same thing would change. And then that was the wow of that restaurant. So I got a different take on that sandwich. I always love so much, Cool, you know, ideally same kind of thing, but it was, it would change. And then that was the uniqueness of that restaurant. So kind of similar in a way, like changing the menu all the time. Mm-hmm. But I remember someone saying to me, I can't remember who it was, but it was the, it was actually breaking the consistency that we all built the industry around of, Everything's got to be consistency, consistency, consistency. You know, you always got to have the same thing all the time you go there. And they said, no, why is that the case? Because you, you, you are limit, limiting a lot of the chef's abilities to really create. And I think with a menu that's changing every week or every day, which is mind blowing, um, those chefs got to be so excited and engaged and the talent must just be pouring out of them. It must be incredible. Yeah, well, and I guess that's the thing, too. I mean, and I, I actually talked about this on CBC last week about, you know, the difference between that mindset of I want to be able to go to this restaurant for my anniversary every year and have the same passion yeah. that I fell in love with, you know, or we fell in love with each other while eating it, you know. So there, there's some restaurants, I think, thrive doing that still. Like people people okay. want, want their dish. Like I think about my father. He orders, he, he has a dish at every restaurant he goes to. That's his dish. And <laughs> his, his, his catchphrase is, I wrote them down on the list and I crossed them off. Because <laughs> he'll never go there again because they took the lobster roll he likes off of, off of the menu. Um, so there's, I think there's those diners and those restaurants and I think that definitely fills a niche but I think for these other ones that are changing so much either seasonally or every day every week the consistency is the cons- consistency and quality right like as, as long as there's things are consistent yeah. good you know they might not always be yeah. your taste but as long as they're they're not just totally flubbing it and you know, no, I, I think it's about like improving it like could you look at it like how do we improve it every time? You know, this week we're going to do it this way. Next week we're going to do it this way and just keep improving it. I think there's something there in the sense that the younger generation is looking for experiences on everything, everything. hundred percent. And I think that's why so many of them love pop-ups. Yeah. There's, that's what, Yeah. There's no consistency there at no, all. No. It, I mean, it does give people an excuse to go out to try, to try something new. Like if, if you know it's going to be different every time, um, if you're like me and get bored, I'd like, I don't, there, there are restaurants that are great restaurants and I love them, but then I, I'll only go every few years because I know the rest of the menu hasn't changed enough to keep me excited. Like I, mm. I, I like to be treated like a baby. I like the chef to be like, this is what I made. Here it is. Um, <laughs> and I like, I like to be surprised. That's, I know that's not every diner's preference, but I I think it's more than more than it's more than half of people are in your camp on that. That they want something new, they want to know there's something new that they're changing. So, I do you agree. have do you, Elizabeth? When you go out, which I still we still have to go for lunch together because I want to I want to go for lunch with you. I think it'd be so much fun. Is how I have a question for you. Um, when you dine out. Do you, oh, what was the question I had? Dominic, you, you, you made me lose my train of thought there. Sorry, man. Yeah, way to go. Um, <laughs> your camera's off. Um, when you dine out and you're, 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 you're looking for those experiences and what people are doing differently in there, do you find, um, like, how do you open your mind to going into these locations that you're not distracted by everything to, to really look at them for what they are. Like you're having a bad day or something, you know, your parking was crazy to find. Do you get rid of all that when you go in there? Yeah, I have to. Cause I mean, I, I feel like because food is my main beat for, for 
my career yeah. writing. And I don't know, maybe you feel like this too. Like I'm every time I eat, I'm working. Okay, it, okay, know, okay, that's cool. Even if I'm just out for lunch with a friend, I'm I'm working. Like it's it's <laughs> luckily I, I love it. But um so so yeah, I kind of have to be because I feel I feel like there's not a lot of food writers left anymore. No. There's a lot of dedicated food writers. So I feel like it's it's only fair for me to be as impartial and unbiased as, as possible. Like good for you. <laughs> That's good. I, yeah, That's, it's got to be hard though sometimes. Like, I, like yeah. I'm impressed by that because yeah. You know, I, I think it's amazing that you do that because it, I, I could see people that are like, I'm having a bad day <laughs> going in here and then maybe something's not right and it just makes it worse and worse. Have you ever yeah. had a bad, have you ha- ever had a bad dining? Not to tell us who it is, but have you? Like a, a really bad, bad? For sure. like a yeah. really bad, like you're like, I can't believe this. Oh yeah. It's, I, I remember, like, I, I won't say the name of the restaurant. It, it's, it's a chain. I had a dinner out or a lunch out with my family when I was a teenager and we still talk about it to this day where everything yes. could have gone wrong went wrong like it's tell us don't tell us the place <laughs> but tell us what happened tell us what happened I was a, I was a vegetarian and I I ordered a veggie burger it came back it was a, a meat burger I took a bite and I was like oh. sent it back he said, oh, no problem. We'll make you a new one. It came back out. It was the same bun. Right? No. <laughs> so they just slapped a new patty in. Awesome. And the brother was eating something. And his it was so hard. His fork broke in half. No. <laughs> so, at this point, we're all laughing. Because it's like, what more? And then the waiter came to pick up a plate. Excuse me, I have to top it off. That is awesome. And his nose bled on the table. No. Like a drop of blood. Oh, wow. Wow. That's, wow. that's in Food Safety 101. Not what not to do, Jerry. <laughs> Don't bleed at the table. Oh, Elizabeth hit the button. She's she's off right now. Thank God this isn't a podcast because that would mess stuff up. She, she'll come back here in a second. Isn't that crazy? Like, I, I see. I You know what? You've had I, always said, I, think, every, I think everybody could. But I told you this. I love bad experiences because, like no, that, it is because you. Yeah, I, 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 I never looked at it like that. But that's cool because you you get to, you get to see kind of you know the best and the worst, right? And yeah, yeah. I, we we talked about um, when that happens, not to penalize the restaurant, but maybe <laughs> not, have you gone back, Elizabeth? Yeah, we have. We were actually okay. at the, like the same, not to that location. We were at oh. the same chain um, recently, like. Many many years later, and did they do a good I'm job? I'm honest about it because my <laughs> actually at one point looked at the server and said, and he wasn't being mean about it, but he said, yes. "This is the worst meal my family has ever had." <laughs> <laughs> and he was right. God, so it was actually like it ended up being very funny. It's a it's a funny memory. Yeah, like, yeah of course. Like I've had bad meals especially when traveling you know you yeah. you end up at a place that you you probably shouldn't have gone to you don't know its track record and you, you just have to kind of roll with it like it's I, I know we we all spend a lot of money eating out and you, you don't yeah. really want to have a bad experience but there's always a good one around the corner yeah I was gonna say we used to when we'd go out for dinner and with my chef and we'd go out and if we had a bad experience, we kind of actually liked when it was a bad experience because we're both food guys and it'd be like, all right, we're got a good one. (laughs) It was like a gem. And then we would just be laughing over it. Like I've seen everything from raw chicken being given to my chef, which if you ever dine out with a a chef, do you ever notice that they take the food apart before? Oh yeah. Yeah, like they they have to learn about the food before they eat it. And he would do that. And I'd be like, can you just eat the damn burger? And then he pulls it apart and he's like, look, it's raw. (laughs) I'm like, no. (laughs) Right? So, yes. Um, 
Very cool. Very cool. I, I, I love that. I love that. Um, so I gotta ask you this question, Elizabeth. This is the part of the question that chat uh, told me to ask you. Okay. Is it's asking around supporting local producers and local is almost like a part of the DNA of restaurants today. It, it's just everywhere, right? Like it's, it's like, I don't think you're not, not going to have local somehow weaved into your restaurant. How do you see restaurants moving forward to continue to leverage that essence of local on their menus and what they're doing? Yeah, you know, it, it is funny because I got to a point where I'd be be interviewing um, chefs and asking them what made the restaurant special. And they say, well, everything's local. Like we, we source everything locally and we make, all, we make all the sauces from scratch. And I'm sort of like, well, honestly, that's what, that's what everyone one says. And I mean, yeah. at this point too, like I think sourcing local used to be, um, you know, it, it was more costly for a lot of people. So it was kind of a prestige thing, but I, I do think like a lot of local, local produce, um, meat, things like that is, is going to become a better option for sustainability for a lot of people. Um, it's more, you know, supply chain, it's a little bit more reliable depending on where you are. So I think, I think it's, it's no longer just a, a matter of taste. I think it's just going to become the way that people do business. Is, just is business. Um, but I, I think too, like, I, I don't know, like, I always have wondered if those local partnerships, listing the names of farms on menus, things like that, if it's something that the general public care about, or if it's just things that... Well, I think they did at one time, didn't they? Like, there was that, wow, it's cool. I, I think like, they now, do. Like they, they're, they're, you they're still do? do you, you believe they still do? I think they do. Cool. But, you know, I have noticed a trend, though, towards restaurants telling me oh we get our lamb from this farm but we don't put it on the menu anymore and i'm not really mm. sure why um i don't know if you have any thoughts i got, I got an idea on that I, <laughs> okay. I i like i like when they do it as well i but i i think for me personally and, and for people that i often dine out with um when they say that that like I find myself going to Google that, which I try not to do when I'm sitting eating. Right? I don't want to do that, but I want to now go Google. Well, what farm is it? What is it? Is it because originally when I started doing that, it was I didn't believe them. I didn't believe what they were necessarily saying because you hear stories and you see, you know, sometimes sometimes local is not possible to do all the time, especially in a large way. So. Yes. So sometimes we have it, sometimes we don't. So that might be a thing. But um, I, I think if if the consumer is inquisitive and wants to know a little deeper, it's harder to explain sometimes for the servers, right? The, the chef might know the story behind all the different um, suppliers, but now am I going to be able to relate that information to all my staff so that when the customer does ask, is it causing... Is it causing the service issue? Oh, uh, that's yeah, that's a good point for for sure. Because because that's the thing too. I mean, especially with the last couple of years, with it was impossible to educate servers on mm -hmm. everything. There's so much turnover. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just it, it's it was probably a lot more headache for them for sure. And then then there's this other thing too, where local isn't always better. I mean, I don't want exactly. all of it so from true. Salisbury Island necessarily. I want olive oil from Italy. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I don't necessarily always want Canadian cheese if it's not, if it should be Italian cheese or Spanish cheese. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, I think some restaurants are starting to admit, but what if, what if I like the imported stuff better? You know? Yeah. And so I, I do think, you know, as, as a diner, I, I want the best possible quality. I want the ingredients that should be appropriately used for those dishes but i i do feel too like i think so many people are still quite disconnected from their communities you know i i'm obviously involved in restaurants and i write about things so i try to you know insert myself in as many places as i as i can within the city but i think yeah. about family members who who rarely get downtown and they they don't know who the local ice cream guys are and they don't know who the local um, 
you know, cheese makers or the guy who makes, you know, the organic flour or whatever. So I think a lot of those people still think it's pretty cool. Like, oh, these are these are Alberta. It's Alberta asparagus season. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the, the, the cool thing about how restaurants influence local and local influences restaurants is restaurants that are trying to do that to the quality game when they're close with their producers, they can say, and I think they influence the producers in a big way. And not necessarily always just because of volume, but only because the producer wants to up their game and because it's going to benefit them and everything. When the restaurant goes back to the producer and says, Hey, we like it, but we're looking for something closer to this. And that inspires the producer to up their game because the restaurant's, prodded them to do it and then they get to go sell it in retail and farmers markets and all that and it just it, it elevates the quality of everything when the when the chefs and the restaurants are, are sourcing locally because they'll i think they drive what the innovation is at the producer level in a big way more than they may think right right well because local tastes are, are different like tastes yeah. are always, um like i think about i, I mentioned lamb again because i i ate a couple times at this Mediterranean restaurant I was writing about. And I, normally I don't love lamb. Like I don't love New Zealand lamb specifically. So they kept serving me lamb and I loved it. I was like, this is, this is delicious. It, delicious. It, it's from Lambtastic Farms. Lambtastic Farms. I was good. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's you know, a, they it's spectacular. Serve, it's really good. So good. And they, they service a ton of restaurants and their lamb. I do think better suits local tastes. In, really? In, yeah. Is yeah. that is that up by in central Alberta? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Closer, it's closer to Red Deer, I think, right? Yeah, I think it's by Statler. Yeah. And I mean it's it's, it's by an Irish guy. It. Like he's 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 Irish by yeah. but um I do think their lamb appeals to local tastes. So yeah. it's and I, I don't know if they create a product that does that if it's we're all just used to it now but um it's i i do notice that i do prefer their lamb to a lot of other lambs yeah very interesting um so uh, richard uh, uh, richard we were he, he lambtastic was storing there in his cold storage just as an fyi jay okay yeah like that, that's how I, 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 and I started buying it for home because Somebody introduced me to it, and I was like, "Yeah, when you get the New Zealand stuff." But I, 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 I gave my parents some of that, and they, they hate New Zealand lamb, and um, they prefer Ontario lamb. But when they tried this lamb, they said, "Well, this is the best they've ever had." So, yeah. cool. I've heard, I've heard that. That's why when you said that, I haven't heard it in a while. I don't hear much of it. I'm, I'm not a big lamb guy. I just don't, I, I had, there was once I had it like many, 20 years ago and it was incredible. I still remember that dish, but since then I went and tried to create it myself and I just messed it up. Yeah. It was horrible. It was a, and then I, ever since then, I just, I can never have it again. I really, Santorini. <laughs> what? Santorini. They do a good job. Yeah. <laughs> so I have more questions. Elizabeth, how important is, and this is for the restaurateurs. Um, that are out there and, and, and uh, that work in the restaurant and everything. And today's a, first of all, today's a tough day for a lot of restaurants because they have to pay back the loans mm-hmm. and stuff that they all possibly borrowed and stuff like this. And, and we've heard this from restaurants. Canada was posting a lot today. Kelly was as well uh, posting on there. I posted as well, just thinking of people going through this, this kind of difficult time because we know restaurants didn't really bounce back as much as, you know, a lot of other businesses possibly have as well. But it's very vibrant in Calgary. I, I, I travel the country as well. And I always think Calgary is just rocking in the food scene. Are you, would you agree with that? Like it is starting to become a very big player. That, not that it wasn't before, but it was always Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, then Calgary. Is Calgary getting up there to be one of the top ones? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean... Especially, I think, I think, I don't think you can compare us necessarily to Toronto and Vancouver. I, I lived in Toronto for, for years and I found there, I actually found the restaurant scene hard to navigate because it's so big, right? Yeah. And it's, it's less cohesive. I think Calgary, um, 
is maybe a little more cohesive than than Toronto. Vancouver, I think, is killing it right now. I think Vancouver yeah. has a great restaurant scene. Um, and I think, you know, I know when they both got Michelin stars, people were like, well, why not Calgary? And I, I think Calgary's restaurants are different than Vancouver and Toronto's restaurants. But I think they are really good. Like, I think there is, for a city this size and a city that is fairly isolated, like we're not right next door to another really big city. I mean, Edmonton is Edmonton has a different restaurant scene than Calgary. Oh. I think it's really interesting. Oh, it's so different. Oh, so different. Um, it is so different. It's, I feel like we're... We're not necessarily directly influenced by Edmonton or Vancouver. Like we are kind of doing your own thing. Our own thing, which yeah. I think is really is interesting. I mean, I think I think that happens in a lot of art scenes too, when a city doesn't necessarily have a lot of, you know, sort of direct influences coming from like a the shadow of, of whatever's really close by yeah. that they can kind of do their own thing. So, yeah, I am interested to see what's going to happen because I think I mentioned this earlier. Like, I do see some cha- a lot of chains taking up real estate. Like, well, a lot they're of- coming. They're coming to Calgary because it's affordable. To yeah, their businesses here, right? Like, and same with Edmonton. We have California Pizza. Mm-hmm. You know, is killing it up here, and the, you know, like they didn't go to Toronto or Calgary. They came to Edmonton, right? So, I think it's also economically a great place to start. If you are bringing up some of those big changes from the U.S. Uh, marketplace, which we do know some are coming up that are really big, that are going to be, you know, rattling a lot of stuff in Calgary. Um, but I think it's 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 almost like a safe place. Saskatoon was doing the same thing, right? Saskatoon was like a safe place. Well, I think and Winnipeg for the longest time was kind of the test bed of, of any U.S. chain to come to Canada. Oh, was it? Okay. Well, because I think the and, – and London, Ontario, I think, is the other one. It can, if you can make it there, they they kind of said you can make it anywhere, right? From a chain perspective, because the the cross section of the population, blah blah blah, the, the economics. But that yeah, Winnipeg and, and London, Ontario, I think are the the, the spots. Edmonton. Have you been to London? I've been to London. Calgary, right? <laughs> hey, if you can survive just going to London, you're good. <laughs> love London, Ontario, people, but. <laughs> I've been there. I, you know, it's, I actually love London. It's, I think it's beautiful. I think it, I love that whole area down there, Woodstock and That's all that cool. area. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not joking. I do. <laughs> I've done a lot in those two cities. I actually do. <laughs> yeah. Back, backtrack, back pedaling here a little. Um, but I do, so do want to. So um, is there any other upcoming chefs or locations? Elizabeth, you mentioned the one, um, the salt um, and brick. Is there any other that you want to throw a shout out that we oh. we, we, we got to go try that we just don't know of? Yeah, you know, well, there's a new place <clears throat> that's that's opening, sort of. And I think it's opening, I believe, like, I don't have all the details. I think it's opening sort of as like a, a nighttime pop-up in the meat and bread sandwich shop. And it's, it's called, oh gosh, I shouldn't even talk about this without knowing. I think it's called Jasmine's, but... Um, it's um, Garrett Martin, who was used to be a, a a culinary director with Concord Group. Okay, he was sort of the opening chef at Major Tom. So he has okay. he left he left that job um, last year at some point, like almost a year ago, I think. And he, this is his new new venture. So oh, really cool. That'll that'll be Major Tom was like number one in Canada two years ago, or when when they, they number, were... one, number one best new best new. Yeah. So he, um, yeah. So he has a, an, I think it's called Francine's, something like that. Um, yeah. So that that one is is is. I mean, and that's what a lot of these younger chefs are doing. Are do yeah, Francine's. Um, that's what a lot, a lot of these younger chefs are doing. Is they're kind of doing proof of concept, like doing yeah. a little pop up, which. I mean, I, I feel too, like some of them, it doesn't work out great for them. Like people don't hear about it. People, I'm often not really a fan of pop-ups because I feel like the, the service uh, often isn't there. Um, there's, you know, the, the the level of the wine usually isn't there. They run out. It's, I like the scrappy energy sometimes, but sometimes it's also like I'm spending 200 bucks. You know, uh, I want it. 
I want it to be on point. So, and I also, you know, worry too much about um, not necessarily permanent pop-ups like this, but all the little ones kind of eating into some of, you know, the full brick and mortar restaurants business too. Right. So, but yeah, I think a lot of these younger chefs are doing these, these sort of proof of concept, um, not quite temp, not quite pop-ups, but not permanent businesses too. So I think we're going to see more of that. People just testing the waters, looking for investors. I was going to say investors got to be, they're still out there. I was talking to a restaurant today that has investors and opening up incredible place up here. And I'm like, wow, they still exist. (laughs) That's good. I think, I think they do. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I don't, I I don't know that much that's, that's coming. I mean, I mean, Concord, dominates a lot of the new restaurants yeah calgary and you know which is controversial i think they do a great job i really like them i think they've they've raised the bar in calgary a lot but they they sort of opened up a lot of stuff over the last couple of years you know catching up after the pandemic and yeah. are are now opening up restaurants in toronto so oh, are they they're moving yeah. out there yeah they just opened a lulu bar in toronto and okay. uh, they're opening a bridget bar and a national i think they're all in the same sort of like there's a big restaurant complex at the bottom of the Oh place. yes, I know it's called um the well distillery distillery no it, the well no it's the in the well. well the well the well yeah, I think it's called the well is that is that what you're talking about Elizabeth it's it's yeah. Yeah. huge yeah. it's called the well yeah I think yeah. there's Adam, Adam's tied to it yeah lots of restaurants in there yeah so, yeah that's where their focus is right now so I don't think they have much planned for for Calgary in the near future. So I'm just, you know, but there's always places opening up. There's always like, you know, new Indian restaurants, new Thai restaurants and lots of new bars. There were a ton of new bars last year. So well, there was a lot that closed bars took a hit over the last five, six years. Right. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Is there anything that's completely out there bizarre that you're like, this is the most craziest restaurant I've ever been to in Calgary? Like, oh. It's just like, holy cow. Like, kind of like. Have you seen on TikTok the Karen restaurants, right? Yeah. Like there can be attitude. Like, is there anything that's just not like that, but like anything bizarre that you're dining out and going, I can't believe they do this. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. So, so me and Dominic came up with an idea. We'll share this with you. Okay. <laughs> we did a show last week called The Dollar Dine. We invented how to do a dollar store restaurant. <laughs> we did. You're, you're and probably, made money you're not a return customer of ours. And apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be no service, but <laughs> exactly. We don't need investors either because it's all dollar stuff. <laughs> yeah, we created a model where we could actually sell good food through uh-huh. a certain model, but everything is a dollar to three dollars. That's it. No, nothing over three. Well, we, we, me and me and your, your our guest said up to ten, Jay. Just so you know. <laughs> I was thinking at $10 three. for the full meal. Ten dollars for everything. All day. Ten dollars all, all day. Ten dollars. So ten you ten your, max, your max bill. Well, you know, I think you got something there because I, I don't know how I, I don't know about a dollar, but um, you know, I have teenagers. They want to eat out with their friends. They oh, I never thought of that. They're they, coming. They're coming to our place, Jane. Yeah, they, they want inexpensive food. Like my my kids, there's a place called Tokyo Street Market here in Calgary, oh, yeah. which is, yeah. is very low cost. I mean, the food is fine. It's, yeah. you know, it's not, you know, high-end New York City omakase or anything, but it's, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's okay, Japanese food. And they love it because they can, they can get away with eating there for 10 bucks. They can find something. Yeah, I am, I am stoked, Dom. We got to move forward with it. It's a great idea. Right, because here, well, here's the thing: we're gonna, get, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna buy our hot dogs like that day before they, you know, they're. <laughs> no, we're not. It's all we're good bad. food. We're gonna, we're gonna reduce, we're gonna reduce weight what, by doing that. No, I did a show today that people were asking about P and L, and here's what I believe, and this is to all the restaurateurs out there: the restaurant model is broken. It it cannot exist much longer based on the percentage of sales or percentage of return profit. It doesn't work anymore the traditional way. And we haven't reinvented it over 200 and some years. It's the same thing. Buy a product, sell it enough, up, you know, increase it a percentage and then make a profit. And that's how you 
create your revenue. That is shrunk so much now that it is so razor thin that it doesn't have sustainable power. So you have to look at other ways to generate profit in off your brick and mortar. And then when we were, we came up with multiple different ways all the way down to a subscription model restaurant using like, so the dime, the dollar dime would have a subscription base as well. So you would subscribe and then you would get discounts or whatever it is. There was a million different things we came up with, but we looked at it a different way to look at the P and L. So there would be generating profits coming in of other revenue streams would offset the cost. So you could charge those low cost prices and look at how to bring in money. So it's it, like you've been to Rick's, we well, don't know if it's called Rick's Grill, but down in Lethbridge, they have Rick's Grill in the water tower. He had all those billboards around the bottom of it, selling those for X amount of money. We looked at different things like that. We looked at advertising inside the restaurant, uh, vendor advertising. Um, we looked at a few, well, quite a few actually ideas to come up to bring the money in that would offset the cost on the menu. So we reinvented the way of doing this. Yeah. Because yeah. if you look at it today, it just won't last. It just, robotics may help support the profit of a restaurant. If the price of those can come down a little bit more, they will offset, like for a QSR, you don't go there for service really. Mm-hmm. That will, I believe they'll have to come in because the profits have shrunk so much. You won't have investors. No one's going to invest in a restaurant with a 1% return. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing too is, is, Sure, like fine dining, high end restaurants, that's a different market. But yeah. for yeah. people who are hungry yeah. and want to eat, yeah. um, you're right. It's, I mean, it's, a, it's a hard sell. The dollar dying. Anyways, <laughs> you're giving all your secrets, yeah. Eh? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, the other day, well, I'll, uh, this was my idea first. I came up with this idea first. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I did? I tell you, because I have proof. I even took a picture of the cover that I wanted for my book, went to chapters and put it in the book aisle with the other books <laughs> in that section. I took a picture and I put it on, on LinkedIn, I think it was. I was like, oh, you got a book? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> so I have proof. But anyways, it's a great book, by the way. Um, Elizabeth, we'll, we'll wrap up. But I just want to thank you so much for your time tonight uh, on our late night show. And uh, I always like I, this is the second time we've we've chatted, but you, you're you're so amazing to speak with when it comes to our industry. It's unbelievable. So thank you so much for your time. Oh, be, be, yeah, before you leave, though, can I ask a question, Jay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, it's usually the other way. Is he won't shut up and let me in on one. <laughs> what What are your thoughts, Elizabeth, on? So you go out and you you write about the restaurant. I don't know if you're do you, are you a food writer? Are you a, do you consider yourself a critic? Would you be? A, I, no, no, right? I don't think I do, so. I don't okay. consider myself a critic. I I, no. I feel like I assess and you know I sit on panel judging panels and stuff. But in my actual written work, I I tend to profile rather than yeah. That's when I read your stuff. That's how I see it. What do you think about um, the ratings people give restaurants on? Um, um, open table or um, Yelp or any of these other places, and and what what are your thoughts on how people give feedback to restaurants, and and what, what should it be? Yeah, you know it's really hard because I, 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 in some ways I feel like that those reviews are valuable because it it is just like a regular person's take. Opinion, yeah. Like people want to know if they should spend their money. And I, and I think it's good that there is some guidance. And I, I definitely use, like, you know, I might not read the reviews, but I'll look at the star rating if I'm yeah. on a road and driving through a town. So I think they're valuable in some ways. But I also think, I mean, I think we are losing a lot of professional food riser, writers. And I think there is a real place for trained journalists who can look at things fairly, look at, like, the wider breadth of restaurants. I mean, if you've only ever eaten, you know, if you eat out once a month, twice a month, you don't really have that idea of what's out there. No. Um, in the same way that, that a food writer or, you know, an industry person might. Um, so I, I do think a lot of times some of those reviewers might not have 
the breadth of knowledge to to take down a place or to prop it up even. And so it's you know, and I'm not I'm not going to pretend that I'm some kind of expert. Like I'm just a person who eats out a lot and you know has has gained some knowledge from talking to so many people and 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 visiting so many restaurants. But I think. I mean, I do think journalists um, and, you know, professional writers take some responsibility in making sure they can back up what they say, whereas yeah, yeah. the public doesn't necessarily take that. Yeah, approach. that's I, I kind of advocate for be careful in how you leave your review, because a, you could do a lot of damage that's not, not necessarily fair or true. Right. And if it was true, would you be better off telling the restaurant directly versus leaving them some sort of damning review because that yeah. that could be that that that's hard now if 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 the restaurants on it was honest with themselves they'd find ways to i think to solicit that feedback in a different way maybe and i i don't you know i'm not i'm not sure that the cue card the cards at the table are the right thing but um getting it from the from the servers might be a, a way but yeah I'm, I'm interested in uh I, it's it's i'm curious that why why have we lost journalists in every city that write about food like there's not a lot left what, what's what's is it just the media's hey we we got to try and write about the news and that's all that's left or there's there's no budget for it largely like there, it, it it's shockingly not a high paying job <laughs> so i mean even i have to diversify by writing do, about do, other things do, does the public not want to know no, I think they do want to know. I think it's just the media, like the print media industry is being gutted. Yeah, okay. and yeah that's not right. But now, like, on that, I want you to share because you posted, that's why I text you, your your thing that you're putting on there, your subscription you have for $5. Oh, yeah. Yes, you got to share everyone. Just put that on there. Dharma, oh, you, yeah, I do. I do a, during the pandemic, I started a um, a, a newsletter for, for yeah. Calgary restaurants and, and food and beverage. Um, just, you know, a place I can kind of dump all of the stuff that's in my head that doesn't necessarily fit into articles. So it's it's a sub stack. It's called um, Who's Hungry Calgary? You can read it at uh, subscribe at hungrycalgary.substack.com. OK, cool. Well, we'll put that up on this show. Not that it's a podcast, but we'll put this up there and we'll tag it in. And then I'll share that, Elizabeth, everywhere. Thank you. Yeah, it's fun to write. And I do. It's free every other week. And then there's there's a paid option to do. But. Nice. Um, That's really cool. Yeah, the 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 newsy part is 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 free to subscribe, so it's yeah. fun. I like doing it, and it's people seem to like it. So, yeah, I was gonna say, like, obviously we're we're food people, so we we're interested in that. But I think, um, like you said, you write for Avenue and for the Herald and and CBC. I think I've heard you on CBC. Do you do CBC Radio as well? Yeah, I do it. I do it in the afternoon. Yeah. They have Perfect. a food in the morning named Elizabeth Carson and I'm like do, do we both need to be named Elizabeth <laughs> it's it's confusing to people people will be your voice is so different in real life and I'm like yeah that's that's not me so she does she does reviews and then I do food trends in the afternoon okay oh wow yeah um doing stuff like this obviously would help a little bit um have you ever considered doing your own thing on on like like this like this mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, the thing is, I, I'm just like, I'm an old school journalist. I just, I'm just like, but I, I you know, so the, the, the newsletter is sort of me building my own, own thing a little bit, but mostly I just have my nose down writing, right. writing headlines. So it's well, like, Elizabeth, what we'll do, because I, I think you're phenomenal. We'd love to have you back many times. Yeah, to we're going to have her on, on a regular, Yeah, because we interview people from all over the world and everything yeah. else. Yeah, um, we just had uh, Paul Barron on from Florida yesterday, which I'm still trying to digest what he shared with us. It was incredible. Um, but we'd love to have you back as a co-host and join us as much as you can and share all this good stuff that you do. Oh, you. yeah, whenever you want. Like, I, I love talking about food and restaurants. Uh -huh. and again, like any avenue I can have to share just all this stupid stuff I pick up along my way. It's incredible. It's incredible. I'm happy to do it. Uh -huh. We'll we'll share your your newsletter, everything, yeah. everything Sorry, that you're one doing. More question. On the producer, on the producer side, on the food <laughs> manufacturing side, the agri food side, you report a little bit on that. Oh yeah. On the, on the manufacturing side, um, 
Just don't ask him a politic, politi- well, I'm political. The, the, I'm not going it's there. The, but no, not tonight. Is that, is that growing? Is that stopped? Like there used to be some innovation and some growth and opportunities, but it's it's hard because of where we are in the country. And where where do you see that? Is that is that growing? Is are we getting some cool stuff happening on the manufacturing side? Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, definitely in like on small scale, right? Like there's there's always smaller artisanal products. I don't I don't know too much or pay too much attention about larger scale um mm-hmm. larger scale stuff. But um yeah, I I I think so. Um yeah, there there always seems to be new stuff out there. That that one of our next guests Jay from Sizzle We'll we'll talk about that part of it because on the small side, they need they need real kitchens to to test in right and to do stuff and that's sometimes that's a bar- well that's a barrier all the time to 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 entry right they're going to do it from their house and stuff and you know they but when they go to a restaurant the restaurant's going to say hey can you produce X amount or can I need to buy this much and the 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 entrepreneurs stunned by it because they're like how am I going to make all that stuff so that's yeah. yeah. That's yeah, cool. and this just is like commercial kitchens, like the shared yeah. kitchens you can um you can rent out. I've heard of people like buying food trucks too, just so that they have a commercial kitchen that they yeah. can. Have you heard this Uber model for kitchens? So you can what was it? We we talked about this other, the, was oh, it last night? Cloud kitchens. Uh, well it's kind of like that, but you can book these kitchens like Uber and stuff like this. Like you're renting a kitchen for the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like yeah. a shared works office space, but with with kitchen. Yeah, but they had a fancy name for it because I mean I used those in the past and stuff like that. But what was it? Didn't he say something unique about that? Ghost Something's kitchen, like? the cloud kitchens. Yeah, I can't remember. Sorry, Uber. The Kaepernick guy started cloud kitchens in the states. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we asked him, "Is that going to stay?" And he's like, he thought, oh. "He thought Kaepernick was a kind of a real estate play more than a a kitchen rental place." And you know, some of the, some of the, you know, to get slightly off topic, some of those cloud, the sort of shared kitchen places have been in trouble with public health recently. So yeah. there, there's yeah. that. it's, it's tough, right? It's a tough, it's a tough game to, to, to bring you new food. But the cool thing is, like we said, because of the pandemic, there is opportunity in spaces that were, that, that need new restaurants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Elizabeth, I know you have to go. It's late. Don't we always have to remind ourselves that we do this late night? So it yeah. actually is late night for people. Um, so <laughs> in Toronto, it's almost 11 o'clock. So anyways, yeah. and there is people joining us from Toronto. So anyways, Elizabeth, we'll have you back many, many times and enjoy the conversation. We have other guests on. We want to have you back because I want, I want to, uh, I want to share um, all your knowledge with them as well. So thank you oh, so much. Anytime. I'm, I'm always here. So that's awesome. And Dominic, it's been a pleasure once again. What were you going to say? Thanks. I was going to say thanks to Elizabeth. Were you? Okay. <laughs> I'll let you talk this time. No, I- <laughs> Anyways, we're back again tomorrow night, 9 30 Eastern time, 7 30 mountain standard time. And tomorrow we have Monty on the show. And then we have Chris on the show from app eight. Do you ever, do you, ever, you know, app eight, Elizabeth, it's mm-hmm. the computer. Pro, it's the app that allows you to buy your, Pay for your food if the server doesn't come to your table. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. That guy. We have yeah. that guy on the show tomorrow night. Yeah, really cool. Really cool what they built and stuff like this. And he's, they've done very well and things like this. And they do like Rogers Arena here in Edmonton. And they do a lot. I think they do all Boston pizzas and stuff. So, yeah, oh, cool. we have him on the show. And then we have Monty from Florida joining us again. And uh, thank you. It's going to be a blast. So, and then next week we have... We have some really cool guests. Dominic's lining up for next week as well. So, yeah, yeah. yeah there's a lot, that that's why I asked, right? That there's there's so much cool stuff that happens. Like the amount of the really even even when it's stagnant, the innovation that happens yeah. is is cool. Oh, you know? for sure. I mean, think about like partake the the non alcoholic beer is a Calgary. The product. president just messaged me the other day and said something to me, and I said. That is like one of the most incredible brands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, that is an amazing wow. brand. Is that, that's Calgary? 
Yeah, the guy's like originally from Ontario, but he lives in Calgary now. Yeah, yeah, he messaged me just the other day. And yeah, I said, it's, it's I love your brand. And actually, actually, I think he watches my show. So <laughs> I think that's why he messaged me. And I said, I, I said, your brand is incredible. I see it all the time. And uh, well done. Because that need to be reinvented. Yeah. It, it, it really good. did. Tastes good. So. Yeah. Cool. Like, do you remember back in the day when someone would joke with you and then be like, it's, you know, maybe near tasting. Beer. Just, yeah. Like your beer was like, oh, it was just horrible. Right. So. Anyways, thank you again, Elizabeth. We'll shut this down. Dominic's got to get to bed with an older guy. Yeah, me too. And uh, anyways, thanks so much. And everyone else, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow night at 930. And uh, we'll wrap it up from there. Thanks so much. Bye.